Hey guys, so this is an interesting video on Wild Rift. So we're back with a patch 3.2 preview breakdown. Now, as you guys know, I don't normally do breakdowns for the preview that preview videos that they release. The main reason why I don't is because uh, pretty much you get very little information from it and there's not really enough to do like an analysis or a review. But for this particular patch, it's pretty ADC focused and I was really excited about it. I literally couldn't fall asleep. So I decided to just make a video on it to share my my thoughts and yeah so here we are with what I'm going to be calling a patch 3.2 preview breakdown so as you guys can see I basically created what I would say is somewhat of an infographic on all of the changes just sort of mishmashed into one image so I'm just going to be talking over this image because I don't enjoy like scrolling the video back and forth um, or muting the video, etc. I think that that's a pretty poor way of presentation. But anyways, um, I've sort of basically put the Elemental Rift background and I've sort of put in the pictures of everything that will be added and I'm just going to be talking over this uh, picture. So first up, obviously, we have Elemental Rift, which I'm not going to be covering too much because we talked about that in the previous two um, or three, maybe, um, patch reviews. And I don't think there's too much uh, merit in discussing it right now because it's still in its testing phase. And they did say they're going to come up with a new uh, kind of elemental riff with only one element, which could be interesting. But overall, it doesn't really change too much in my opinion. So we're going to have to wait for the final version before we go into an in-depth discussion. So let's begin at the upper left-hand corner of the infographic. Let's begin with the champion. So here we have Echo. Pike and Nautilus. Now these three champions are incredibly, incredibly popular champions so it's a pretty amazing thing that they're added to Wild Rift. Echo is a mid lane or jungle sort of assassin who has a very cool ult which allows him to rewind time to I believe it, it's um, four seconds ago if, if I'm not mistaken but yeah so we have Echo who's a really popular champion. Then we have two of the most popular support champions in Nautilus and Blitz, uh, not Blitzcrank, Nautilus and Pike. So Nautilus of course is a very tanky champion who has insane engage in CC with his Dredge Dine which is a hook. Uh, he has an, a point and click ultimate which uh, causes p uh, people to get knocked up. So he's very tanky, really good at playmaking, really good at roams, really good at engaging, so really popular as well. And Pike who is an assassin support. So he is yet another hook kind of support where he throws his bone skewer at an enemy to pull them closer towards him. And the main draw of Pike is his ultimate, which is death from below. So basically when enemies get to a certain um, uh, threshold, you can ult them for an instant execute. And if you do that, your ult will reset. And you will also give the kill goal to your allies and you don't technically KS people so they will still get the kill goal. So the interesting thing about Pike is that um, in PC his ultimate reset had like a 15 second cooldown which means you can only use your ult for the next 15 seconds at no cost. But they did mention in the video that uh, it's a full reset which I'm going to assume is going to be something like how Darius ult works which is where uh, he gets a full reset it doesn't get placed on a time limit where you can only cast it within that certain window so if that's the case pike could be really strong in wild rift but of course we'll, for all three champions we'll have to see so next up we have the remix system which i feel is great that's being added in because obviously there are those matches where you have those afks from the very beginning of the game and the game is basically lost from minute or not even minute from second one but honestly while I feel this is really good, I'm wondering why it took them so long to add Remake into the game. Like, um, I don't know if it's uh, really hard to, to change the system or, or, or whatnot, but it doesn't seem so hard to, to put it in. And putting it in like one and a half years into the game seems pretty late, but hey, you know, I'm not complaining. It's really good that we have it now. So next up, we have Control Wards. And now the first thing you think about when you talk about Control Wards is like, Champions like mainly Evelyn, maybe some other stealth champions like Akshan or Rengar as well, but control wards are gonna bring down Evelyn's uh, level uh, of power tremendously, uh, and she's really good at the moment. And the other thing is, control wards are normally used when you do objectives like uh, dragons and barons, and that's to prevent, of course, um, the enemy wards from being able to see what exactly you're doing. So that's going to be really useful as well. So you don't have to like take sweeper all the time when you're doing objectives as like a jungle uh, anymore, perhaps, because of the control wards. 
but we'll we'll have to see how the control wars change the meta. But I do think control wars are a good change, which also took a long time to come. But hey, you know, control wars. Uh, I could see why they wouldn't want to add it to Wild Rift because it's another layer of complexity, another button you need to press. That that sort of deal. But for the remake, not quite. All right. So next up, we have the new runes. So first up, we have two new keystone runes. The first one, uh, as you can see, right below the the remake. Uh, it's sort of in, it's in the PNG, so it doesn't really have a background, but it's Lethal Tempo. So Lethal Tempo is basically mainly taken by, by attack speed ADCs. Think ADCs like Jinx, uh, for example, which basically every auto attack that you cast, you will get uh, an increase in attack speed. And when you stack it up to max stacks, which I believe is 5, you will get even more bonus attack speed. So it's really useful for anybody who wants to attack. Uh, a lot and wants to attack really fast, mainly champions like Jinx, auto attack focus champions, maybe even something like Caitlyn, maybe. But yeah, so the other rune uh, is Kraken Slayer. So Kraken Slayer, as you guys can see from the picture at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, this is a I legendary, not legendary, mythic item in PC. So what it does, as you can see, in PC, 65 attack damage, 25% attack speed, 20% critical chance. Uh, it has a passive with, where every third attack deals an additional uh, amount of true damage, and also a mythic passive where every other item you get ga gives you 10% attack speed. But the issue is it's going to be converted into a rune. So I find it very strange because they did mention in the video that they're taking away the true damage aspect of Kraken Slayer, which basically is the main aspect of Kraken Slayer. Because if you think about it, without that um, true damage passive, it basically becomes a Storm Razor. Because it gives you attack damage, attack speed, and crit chance. So I'm not too sure what the rune is going to actually be. It could be something to do with the mythic passive where uh, when you get more items, you get more attack speed. Or maybe your attack speed grows throughout the game like a gathering storm uh, kind of thing for attack speed. Or it could be just that it gives you raw stats of like attack damage, attack speed, and crit chance. But that's re really weird for a rune because you, you get that from items. So I really don't know what it's going to be like. And I'm not going to speculate too much on what it is because we really have no idea. So, so uh, yeah. Next, we're going to talk about the minor runes. So there's going to be two minor runes added for Domination, Resolve, and Inspiration each. And I've actually put them in order. So um, these images these images are... These images, not sure why I'm saying that's so weird, but are taken from a uh, leaked PC. So the colors are going to be a little bit different in Wild Rift. Like, um, Scorch is going to be turned into a red color, not uh, purple, and Nullifying Orb is going to be turned into a green color, not purple. So, yeah, so that's why the pictures are different colors because they're a lot easier to take from the leaked PC version. But, anyway, so. Um, something I want to talk real quickly as a preface to discussing the minor runes is that in. Leak PC, all runes, not all runes, but majority of runes have some form of scaling factor. For example, Scorch um, and Demolish have scaling. Like Demolish scales with, with uh, your max health or your bonus health, uh, uh, one of those. But it scales with your health. Whereas in Wild Rift, the only runes that scale with your stats are Keystone runes. So for example, Aftershock or Fawn of Life scales with your defenses or your AP for example, but none of the minor runes actually scale with any of your own stats at all. So that is a really interesting thing to consider. Now there, there are two possibilities here, either they are not gonna scale at all like all the other minor runes, or they could add scaling from the minor runes, which isn't really difficult, but it's just that they haven't done that, I, I believe for simplicity's sake, so it's not too uh, complicated when you're choosing your runes and you see a whole bunch of scaling on so many runes. But anyways, we're going to talk about each rune as if there was and there wasn't uh, scaling. So first up, we're going to talk about Domination. So first Domination rune we have is Scorch. So Scorch in League PC tra traditionally is taken by uh, Mages because it's in the Sorcery Tree. And what it does is it basically gives a magic damage burn, sort of something like a brand passive after like you cast spells on them. It burns them for extra magic damage for one second. So now... If this doesn't have any scaling at, at all, and it just gives a flat magic damage burn, it honestly could be taken by physical damage dealers. Like, it could be taken by anybody, because basically who wouldn't want an extra, you know, a, a little bit of extra magic damage to be dealt to an opponent. If you are, if it doesn't have scaling and you're a mage, you want to deal more magic damage. Anyway, if it doesn't have scaling and you're a AD champion, maybe a marksman, let's say, what harm is there in uh, doing a little bit extra uh, magic damage if there's no scaling. Now, of course, if there is scaling, it's going to be taken only by magic damage dealers. But 
Um, I think it's a pretty good rune because uh, it just gives you a little bit of extra early game damage. Traditionally, this rune matters a lot more in the early game than the late game because in the by the late game, your spells and um, you know all your other sources sources of damage are gonna be huge. So it, your rune is not gonna matter as much. Sort of like electrocute how it's really strong in the laning phase, but in the late game, it's not uh, that strong anymore. And the other one we have is Giant Slayer. So Giant Slayer is a new Wild Rift rune, which they did mention is going to do more damage based on your opponent's bonus health. Now, this is a really good idea in theory. However, I believe that there has to be scaling because it's based on your opponent's bonus health. So that's sort of an indicator for whether ru minor runes can have scaling or not. So I think that there probably is. But the main issue with this is that I think for it to be worth, you need to have like two to three minimum like champions that build health. So think think about like maybe if there's a Darius top and a Mundo jungle or like a Darius top or Garen top and a Nunu jungle, maybe this might be a good idea. But in the current meta, it's a very non-tank meta. So you normally have like carry junglers, uh, mages in the mid lane. Like the only tank in the mid lane that you normally see is Galio. And then you have like ADC and China supports are way better than uh, tanky supports at the moment. Uh, maybe only Thresh builds bonus health uh, out of the top tier supports. And in the top lane, um, most fires do build bonus health, but as of now, the current man doesn't seem too worth to get this rune, especially when you consider that Scorch and Giant Slayer are competing with um, other runes like, uh, you know, Triumph, Brutal, uh, Hunter Vampirism, especially for ADCs. I don't think ADCs are going to veer away from Hunter Vampirism because I think that the, the healing that they get from Hunter Vampirism is just too good. In other roles, honestly, as of now, the meta is pretty shaken up in terms of runes ever since the previous rune adjustments, especially for Domination and Inspiration, but Resolve kind of does have a, a strong meta at the moment, which we'll see if can be changed. So yeah, I don't think Giant Slayer is going to make too big of an impact only in very specific games. It's a very specific uh, kind of rune. Now next we have Nullifying Orb. Nullifying Orb is going to be a new resolve rune and this is basically somewhat of a Maw of Malmordia's passive where if you get if you get put below 30% health, you gain a magic damage shield. And this is yet again very very specific, especially when you consider that you're competing with runes like Hunter Titan which gives you tenacity, Bone Plane, which gives you burst uh, resistance, um, adaptive crap pace that gives you a strong laning phase, and second win, which gives you uh, help health in a very poor lane matchup. So it's a very competitive um, pool to be in already. And now flying arc is very specific. So I don't even think you would even take it if you're against a magic damage laner because most mages or most magic damage champions don't uh, really do uh, aren't really too strong in the laning phase that you really need this rune. But I feel like this is something you would only take if you're against like a very heavy magic damage team. So think about like a cannon top, um, maybe a Gragas jungle and like a normal mid lane mage, let's say or an Oriana mid. So maybe you have like three huge sources of AP damage. I can see someone taking Nullifying Orb just as a counter uh, rune to a AP heavy team. But aside from that, I don't think Nullifying Orb is going to be too good. Now next we have a very interesting rune, which is going to be um, Ultimate Shield. So Ultimate Shield... Basically, what it does is it gives you a shield after you use your ultimate. So now, the first thing I ha the first thought I have was Corky. So what about those kind of people who spam ultimates like Corky? Corky has six ults. Is there gonna be a cooldown on this rune? Because if not, Corky can spam ult and gain shield like no tomorrow. But so I do believe there should be like maybe a five to ten second cooldown, uh, especially for champions who can spam ult. Now the second thing is how big is that shield gonna be? Because if that shield is like a, a, a tiny shield, like it's not going to matter. But if that shield is like a, you know, a shield that gives you a, a shield for a quarter of your health, which could be possible because if you think about it, you can only use your ult once in every like 90 seconds or 60 seconds for a majority of champions. It could be possible you gain like a quarter health shield or something like that. And that could actually be useful. So this rune is very situational in a sense that, it, not situational, but it's very dependent on how big the shield is. If there is a cooldown, you know, that that kind of thing on how good this will be but I can see this being an, an incredibly amazing uh, rune because normally when you use your ultimate it means you're deep into a fight if not you wouldn't commit your ultimate so generally whether you're running away or chasing someone and you use your ultimate it means you want that shield so um, I can see it being really good and we'll really have to see but as I said it's competing with runes like Hunter Titan and Bone Plating so it's pretty competitive so it has to be good uh, if people want to take it. 
So now finally we move on to the resolve not resolve, inspiration runes. So first up we have Nimbus Cloak. Nimbus Cloak is one of the, one of the really good uh, runes from the PC and now especially in a very competitive inspiration uh, rune meta where basically the three runes that are really good at the moment are Hunter Genius. Um, we have Sweet Tooth which a lot of people still take and Mana Flow Ban especially you know, uh, for, for me I basically always consider these three because I'm an ADC main. If you're a jungle main of course Mastermind and Pathfinder are still going to be really competitive as well. So basically now, uh, most champions can opt between one of the three because there, there's no rune that's outright better than the rest. So Nimbus Cloak, it gives you a burst of movement speed when you cast spell. So when you flash, you get a burst of movement speed when you ignite or when you cast any other summoner spell, you get a burst of movement speed. Now this is really helpful for chasing people down or uh, escaping from people from the ML. Like maybe you're running away, you press your heal, you get you know double the movement speed from both heal and from... Um, the Nimbus Cloak, or if you're chasing someone down, like let's say there is a Sage running away from you, like you flash forward and the speed from the Nimbus Cloak might allow you to catch him, that's our deal. So I can see Nimbus Cloak being taken a lot, and this might be the new best inspiration rune in my opinion. Now finally we have the Demolish rune. So Demolish is traditionally taken by top lane tanks because it scales off of max health. So if it is the same in Wild Rift where it scales off of your max health or your bonus health. You you will only see um, top lane tanks and fires take it. So think about like Dr. Mundo, Garen, Darius, that, that kind of thing. Because this gives them significant um, tower damage. And I think it's really interesting as well because as I said, with the inspiration meta so uh, even at the moment. Uh, I do believe that a lot of the top laners will be taking this particular rune, but, but if it doesn't scale on max health, if anybody can take this rune, this could be a very competitive rune for the entire uh, roster of champions. Because, you know, having extra tower damage that activates, uh, you know, once every 45 seconds, or in Wild Rift maybe 30 seconds, or we don't know what's the cooldown, but this one definitely will have a cooldown because you can be demolishing towers uh, non-stop. So, um, this could be huge for you know uh, especially top lane uh, tanks and fighters because this will give them significant tower damage but yeah as I said so if there's no scaling for the rest of champions this could be really good as well because there really isn't an outright good inspiration rune at the moment so that could be a really interesting change to the meta so that is pretty much covering everything in the 3.2 uh, preview is just a small little breakdown of my thoughts at the current moment with the very little information that we have but of course when the patch um, drops we'll be doing a full um, patch review and that's where we can get in depth into exactly what is happening what the runes do do they scale uh, what are their cooldowns etc et and uh, you know how good I think they're actually gonna be so regardless thank you guys so much for watching the video and bye